Well, so far in our document, we've seen how to use tag selectors in order to identify where a style is going to go. What I'd like to look at next is a number of additional selectors that we can use inside the style tag to define where we want our styles to be applied. Let's try out an example. I'll go down into my document, and let's suppose that I wanted to take this first paragraph here and style it differently from the other paragraphs. Obviously, I can't use a paragraph selector since that would automatically be picked up and used by the other paragraphs as well. So we'll need something else. And the first type of selector that I'd like to use for this is called a class style. In order to make a class style, let me go back up to the top of my document. And I'll just go down here underneath the last H2 style that we have, and we'll make our first class style. It has a selector as well. But in this case, I get to make up the name of the selector myself. I'd like to call this one Red Paragraph, or Red Para for short. And in order to name this properly, when I create the style, I'll use a period or a dot in front of the name. Then I'll just type out the name. Now I set up the style rule the same way. I use the curly brace and closing brackets for start and end. And I use the same type of styles inside. Now, just so we can see this one really easily, let's just change the paragraph to red. I'll use the color property, colon, and I'll follow that with a hexadecimal color for red. Pound sign, FF for maximum red, 00 for green, 00 for blue, end it with a semicolon, and we'll save our changes. Now that we've created a class style, we'll need to apply it. You'll notice that there's nothing called red para in our document so far. But if I want to take this paragraph down here at the bottom and change it to a red paragraph, I simply add the class attribute. Now this is a normal attribute and it's also global, so you can add a class attribute to just about any HTML tag in the system. I'll use an equals after it. I'll use some quotes and I'll specify the name. And all you do is leave off the dot that you used when you created it. So this would just be red para. I'll close the quotes, and you'll notice that none of the other paragraphs have this class attribute assigned to it. We'll save that change, and let's go and refresh our page. You can see that that bottom paragraph turned right to red. And both of the other paragraphs have been left alone since they didn't have the class attribute set. Of course, like the other selectors, our class selectors are very interesting when we find out that we can use them more than once. Let me go back and set our document up. Now, since everything's red, I'm going to change the color of my H1 tags to a different color so that we can try something out. I'll just replace the red value with zero, and I'll use 255 for the blue value, changing all my headings to blue. We'll make sure that works by saving our document and refreshing the page. And there we can see the blue heading. When we create a class style, we can actually use it in just about any tag we want to. So let me go down here to my second heading tag, and I'll just go into the H1 tag there, and I'll add a class attribute to it as well. I'll set it to class equals red para. Now that's the same exact style that we used in our paragraph below. And since both of these elements contain text, whatever text is included in them will be colored red. Let's save our change and see how that looks out in the browser. Now, notice only the second heading was red. So this also tells us something about the cascading from least specific to most specific in our rule styles. We can see that a tag style is very generic. So it would be at the top of our list. First, we're saying make all tags blue. Then we're actually calling out this specific tag and saying for it to be red you can see that the red color overrides the original blue. And this example demonstrates for us that in most cases, a tag selector will be overridden by a class selector if you're setting the same property in each one. And of course, if we use a style attribute to define the same style property, that will override both the tag and the class. Now there's one other major type of selector that we'll see inside of our documents, and that is an ID selector. So let's go back to our HTML document and we'll try one of those out. Now an ID selector starts out kind of like a class selector at the very beginning. I'm going to use an ID selector on the very first paragraph of the second heading. Now the first thing I'll do here is I'll set up the attribute. 
Instead of using a class attribute, you might have guessed, we're going to use an ID attribute. I'll have an equals. I'll use quotes to start it out. And I'll just give this a name. I'll call it green para, short for green paragraph. Now, what I'm doing with the ID is I'm selecting this paragraph and identifying it with a specific name. And so far, it looks like I'm using a class attribute. But there's one big difference. In each document, you can only have one element with a specific ID, whereas you can use the class as many times as you want. So this is a great way to identify one particular section of your document that you want to apply styles to. Now, when we use an ID selector, we'll use a slightly different syntax. So let's go set up our green paragraph style rule. I'll go right underneath my red para. And what's different about an ID selector is instead of using the dot as a start for the name, we're going to use the pound sign as a start for a name. So my style rule selector would be pound sign green para. I'll have the same syntax after that, an open curly brace, and I'll go down a couple of lines for a closed curly brace. And inside here, I'll just specify the color green. Of course, using hexadecimal values, that will be pound sign, 00 for red, FF for green, 00 for blue. We'll end it with a semicolon, and we'll save our changes. And now when I go out and refresh the browser page, we should see that that first paragraph has been identified by its ID value and the green style has been applied properly.